Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. I'll just talk from behind. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Olivia, and this is Clement. This is Marvin from Singapore Fountain Pen Lovers Group. Um, and Wing is here too, and yeah. from City Lots, and we are live streaming from City Lots, where it has generously let us do a paper buffet testing earlier today. Um, there are some more slots available tomorrow, so if after this live stream you like what you see and you want to test out these papers for yourself, um, go to their website and sign up right away. So before um, before we get into what we're going to talk about tonight, just a quick thing to let you know that if you watch till the very end, there will be a very, very special giveaway. Vinta Inks um, from the Philippines has some really, really lovely inks and they don't, uh, they're not available just everywhere. This giveaway is going to be a set of all of the Vinta Inks. So all please, 20 colors. All 20 colors. So please stay right till the very end for the giveaway. Um, as always, if you have questions, please um, put them in the in the comments uh, on Facebook and on YouTube, and we'll try and answer them as best as we can. Can't promise that we're experts, but um, we do love our paper, we do love our pens, um, so at least we're coming from, from that point of view. Um, Mervyn is a calligrapher, mostly does English calligraphy. Clement is our Chinese award-winning master calligrapher. Uh, I am not a calligrapher at all, but I do write a lot and I do doodle. So um, fountain pen friendly papers are something that we all try and chase, right? Um, and we all have different criteria uh, for the kind of paper that we that we choose and the kind of paper that we're willing to spend money on um, and so forth. So tonight we're going to talk to talk a little bit more about that. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Clement and Mervyn so they can introduce themselves. So hi, my name is Marvin. So I do calligraphy for a hobby, and what I what I want about, about what I want in my paper is that I want to chase for thin lines. So in the world of calligraphy, uh, the swells uh, between the thick lines and the thin lines are very important because they show the character of the calligrapher. So for example, today I have uh, tried this half tone color nine nine white. So I found that. Uh, it's, it's giving very thin lines, and I, I really like it. And usually when I do my calligraphy uh, practice, I usually go for either Kukuyo or Tomoe River paper. So if we can maybe take a look at uh, the samples that we have here. I'm not so sure whether if it's showing up on in the camera. So. The thin lines, the hair lines here are actually much thicker than what we are, we are seeing here in the, the half tone color white. Yeah. So yeah. So basically, that's it for paper about me. I'll hand over to Clement to talk a bit more about Chinese calligraphy. Yeah, um, I just Clement. Yeah, um, they brought yeah. props. Uh, no, I just brought some things I wrote because just now. Uh, let me show what he was writing, and so I think maybe you can say a bit about uh, my experience with paper also. So uh, I think uh, what we Chinese is uh, as as we all know, right? The traditional Chinese calligraphy is to do with brush. So um, when you migrate over to fountain pen, uh, it brings over a totally different set of issues. So uh, actually, it's also quite similar to what Marvin said just now. You want to you want the paper to be not too absorbent, such that it is able to display the details of what you have written. So because a lot of the art of calligraphy is inside the, the details, the extremely fine motor control. Right? So if let's say the paper is too absorbent, your meat goes down, the ink suddenly just gushes out, then all the details will be obliterated and you won't be able to see any of it. So we are looking for paper that holds the ink very well such that it doesn't uh, it, the, it one of the key things that we always look for is this thing called feathering so uh, how to define feathering is that when the ink goes onto the paper you see that the ink kind of like spreads out and you see little sharp uh, needle like things pointing in all directions uh, that is called feathering right and among the fountain pen community that is uh, 
you, I think we are all <laughs> agree that that is relatively an uh, undesirable trait of paper. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, most photocopy paper exhibit this trait. Uh. Uh, why is that so? Uh, maybe I will explain a bit later you know, when we can talk about the more technical aspect. Of maybe I bring you some photocopy paper later <laughs> to show what feathering really means in a, yes. yeah, yeah. you can see for yourself. It's got a lot, I mean, it's got a lot to do with the paper absorbing the ink and very often when the paper, when the ink is very wet and the paper, and the nib is particularly broad, um, you'll end up with a lot of ink being laid down on the paper and some people don't, don't like that because it doesn't have crisp lines. Um, I think for calligraphers, especially whether English, Chinese or any other language, and we do have some uh, non-English, non-Chinese calligraphers in our in our Singapore Fountain Pen Lovers group. Um, we have some Tamil and some Hindi calligraphy uh, calligraphers as well. But I think for all kind of all kinds of calligraphy, that crispness is is really key. Um, if you're a doodler like me and don't, re I'm not an artist at all. I just doodle for for therapy, for sanity, for to use my pens and honestly to use my inks because even if I drank a bottle every day, I probably would not uh, use up all my inks in this lifetime. Um, so I I don't mind. I'm also the unofficial president of the Thick Nib Club. Um, and what that means is I like very broad and very juicy nibs. Um, one of the reasons why that's not very common is because in our fountain pen group, so many people do practice calligraphy or they do practice their penmanship or brush lettering and so on. And they would rather have um, a, a finer nib, um, which tend to be the Asian nibs, the Japanese nibs and so on, the Chinese nibs, um, so that they can have more control um, over their, their lines. And Clement and Merton can talk a little bit more about this. But if you do love, um, I do Zentangle and any kind of patterns, repeated patterns that I do, it's not as important. Um, but what's really important is how the ink looks on the paper. Um, we tried some inks uh, earlier tonight in this paper paper buffet sample set. Um, and some of them um, you would not be able to write on the reverse side of the paper because they're really thin, uh, like tracing paper almost. But the paper makes the ink look really, really good. Maybe a little bit faded, some a little bit more saturated. One of the things we're going to discuss tonight is also another holy grail of fountain pen lovers, um, and that's ink that will sheen or ink that will have shimmer, at, which are the little sparkly particles that you can see um, on the paper once the ink has dried. That's something a lot of people uh, also enjoy a lot. Um, and I think for us, if, we, if we're doing any kind of art, urban sketching and what have you, that's something that is quite desirable. So. Um, Maybe Clement wants to talk a little bit more about the technical. I'll technical. just show them a little bit more. Oh, yeah, yeah, please about. do. Yeah. So, this is the fountain pen table collection, which is what we call so the table bouquet. So, that's of course available on sale on our website. So, basically, there are 18 types of paper inside, five sheets each, A4 size. I think we should have been just sold out our first batch, so the next batch will be coming in two weeks' time. So, as um, the whole team goes through the papers later, you guys will need to comment on the different types of papers and what they like about each type of maybe out of the eighteen what they like the best since we have limited time. So because it's really not easy to test eighteen types of paper in just one hour, it will take you at least two three hours. Yeah, and if you take it leisurely, it will take you a few days. Yeah. So I'll just give it back to them to talk a bit more about technical aspects. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Wei. Uh, so. Actually, let me, maybe my introduction on the technical aspect actually comes more from the manufacture of Chinese paper. Or Xuan is the traditional use for Chinese brush and calligraphy painting. But the, actually the idea is quite transferable. So, um, one of the things that we, we do know about paper is that paper is made out of fibers. Uh, the, for the traditional Chinese paper, you can have many different types of fiber. But I think after many years, right, they realized that um, the optimal combination is a combination of tree bark and hay. It's a mixture of these two types. Of so um, the modern paper is also, uh, some of it is uh, tree bark. Also. Some of the very good paper uh, comes from either tree bark or some, some part of the fiber of the tree. 
And why is it that it's a mixture of two different types of fibre? It's because one fibre is thicker, one fibre is thin. So the thicker and thinner will interlock together and causes the, the, the alignment of the fibres will make the properties very, uh, property of the paper very desirable. So one of the things that uh, I mentioned just now is called feathering. Why is it that photocopier paper tends to feather? It's because the fiber of photocopier paper is all jumbled up in random direction. Uh, this is not necessarily because they try to save costs, but it's oh, I mean, okay, la, it's definitely much cheaper and much easier to produce paper like that. Uh, fair enough. Okay? But the main reason is actually because... Let me pass you prop number one. <laughs> uh, prop number one photocopy. photocopy paper to show how negative. Uh, so we use. Uh, Would you like a very thick, fat nib? Uh, but we, we buy very good photocopy paper here. It's already double A, if I'm not wrong. I, I was going to say, while well, Kevin is showing us what. Actually, it looks no, like. you know, this one's not really fair. Yeah, it's not really fair. We, we buy the best photocopy paper. Zoom, 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 zoom nibs are quite, quite fat and, and juicy as well. But the thing about photocopying mm. photocopy paper is it's not always bad. Yeah, surprisingly not. This and mm. and if you use the right kind of ink and whatever combination, and you don't really mind a little bit of the, the, the reduction in quality. It's actually, it's actually very good paper. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because we only use the best ones. Yeah. So well, this paper. Obviously, we we okay. just proven ourselves. We just proven ourselves. Come use this one. This one's for more for ballpoint pen testing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a zoom. Nib? I don't see. Oh, okay, yeah, this, either. this, 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 yeah, this. Does happens. it do that? <laughs> yeah, a bit. So yeah, as, as you can see, right, there's some, and you come to this spot, you can see that the ink is starting to spread out. Uh, this ah, uh, this is very obvious. Okay. Can you see the M? Yeah, this is where the ink starts to swell and spread out, and you see it's like um like if you have a uh, ability to see even smaller, it looks like needles like that, uh. and so. Why is it like that? It's because the fiber is all jutting out in random direction. Right? For um, photocopy paper, it works that way. It's because the uh, ink jet or the laser printer, the toner is scattered onto the paper. So if the fibers are random, actually it's the, it's the, most, it's the best layout to catch the toner. But the thing is that ink toner is, is solid, mark, but ink is liquid. So liquid will flow along the path of this of the fiber. Yeah. yeah so you so that's why you see that it, it juts it juts out in like little little needles in many different directions. Yeah, it's it's actually because of the fiber layout of the paper. So if let's say you use a very good paper, right, very fountain pen friendly, something like the movie paper, if you manage to get like um, a microscope or something like that to look at the fiber, you can see that the fiber of the movie paper is aligned almost perfectly. Mm. So that's why it, the big, the as the ink goes onto it, it it will it behaves very well. It doesn't spread out. Right? So that's one of the thing. The first aspect is the fiber. The second aspect is this thing called sizing. So what is size? Okay, sizing is not big, small, that size. Uh, it's a wrong understanding. Actually, S I Z E uh, size uh, is something like glue. So when paper is made, uh, there is this size that is applied uh, either in the mixture of the paper pulp or at the end of it. Also, um, in Chinese paper making, right, um, this different type of paper is called sheng uh, shou. So literally translated, it means raw paper and cooked paper. So how it, actually what is the difference is that the so-called the raw paper is unsized. It does not contain any uh, chemical, any treatment on top. So when the ink goes onto it, the ink spreads out very quickly. But so the cooked paper is sized, right? And the for the Chinese paper making, they use this thing called alum, A L U M. It's actually a mixture, or some uh, use a mixture of alum and gelatin. So the, the solution is a mixture of alum and gelatin. So when it goes on the ink, when the ink is on the paper, the ink is not being absorbed into the paper, but the size controls the ink. So this one is used for this type of drawing um, called Gong Bi Hua, which is extremely detailed. It requires uh, extreme precision of the paper. So the paper needs to be very, very well behaved. Um, so for Western uh, paper making, also there is a sizing process. It's just that um, they use they don't use alum, they use different types of chemicals to size the paper. 
Then, so this sizing should not be confused with this other thing called coating. So sizing of paper and coating of paper is different. So when coating is applied onto paper, let's say you see brochures and things like that, those they have like very sh um, glossy, like glossy surface. Glossy. Uh, that one is called coating. Yeah. Coating and sizing is two different different things, uh, different treatment of the paper. So coated paper, I think fountain pen very hard to write onto it uh, because yeah. it's non-absorbent at all. Yeah. So the ink will then pool yeah, on, on the surface of the, the paper, yes. like glossy brochure paper mats and, and so on. And not being absorbed into it. Uh. So when it comes to this one, right? Um, so there are some Chinese manufacturers, they use uh, very lousy fiber, but they apply very good sizing on the paper. So what happened is that actually the paper, although uh, the, the fiber looks like it's very random, but if you write on it with a fountain pen, it actually behaves reasonably well. Uh, so it seems like it's quite okay. But there is a problem with uh, sizing, right, is that the chemicals that they use for sizing, some of it is very climate dependent. So if it is exposed to moisture, like Singapore, right, the, the sizing material will be, uh, it will form uh, something with the air water, it will form a compound with the water compound, water vapor in the air, and the sizing will be gradually worn off. Um, very good examples will be Claire Fontaine. Claire Fontaine has this. So, if you have a pack of Claire Fontaine paper that is sealed inside uh, uh, the plastic shrink wrapping, uh, the moment you open the shrink wrapping, you find that the paper performs very, very well. Mm -hmm. But as if you leave the paper there for, yeah. let's say, three months, six months to a year, you realize that it starts feathering worse and worse. Okay, the reason is because the sizing has been so called dissolved in the air in some sense. Another one that I found recently that has this problem is a Muji. So, mm. so, so Muji sells like packs of loose leaf paper that you can tell. When I first bought it, the paper performs extremely well with the pen. But uh, as I you as I just leave it, in fact, it's not long, you know, it's only about one and a half months only. Then it's, it's start to realize that the feathering starts getting worse and worse. Mm. Yeah. So um, the the best um, policy uh, the best paper is still that if the fiber is very well made because the when the fiber is very well aligned then the the ink when it goes in it will seep very smoothly it will not jump out randomly <laughs> this this is really worrisome because obviously um i'm sure many of you are watching as well uh, but certainly i'm guilty of this i have packs and packs and packs of paper oh, same here, same here, same here. Yeah, and um, the problem is sometimes when you open a pack and, you know, like Clement was saying, the humidity or whatever, uh, sometimes it'll perform really well, sometimes it won't. Um, I guess earlier we had mentioned Tomoe River paper. Yeah. Uh, everyone knows, uh, and that's that's in this that's in this Yamamoto paper sampler pack as well. Um, I think that's everyone... Kind of like grill. It's, it's all the holy grail of paper, even though it, it feels very thin. Um, Tomoe River paper is used in Hobonichi planners, it's used in a lot of notebooks, a lot of high-end notebooks. They have their own notebooks, they've got loose leaf, um, but it's paper that performs really well with a lot of different pens, a lot of different nibs, and a lot of different inks. Um, it'll show off the ink properties very, very well, especially if you have sheening inks. Um, that's inks that sort of change color depending on the, the angle in which you're holding the paper and in which the light hits the paper. Um, monster sheeners like um, nitrogen KWZ sheen machine KWZ machine nitrogen studios no, okay. no sorry, organic, organic studios nitrogen um, some of those are, are real sheen monsters and then the other kind of ink that fountain pen lovers use are shiver inks these are ones with the sparkly particles within the ink when it dries um, the ink will look really really nice and really sparkly um, and quite fancy so they're very useful for Christmas cards, letters, and so on. Um, Tomoe River paper shows off those properties the best. Um, so they're in this pack, and I think Mervyn has also written a couple of samples. Um, but one of the things I wanted to say really quick was that not every ink will perform, not every ink brand, and not every ink model within that brand will perform the same on you know different kinds of papers. And I think that's why all of us, not just the three of us, but pretty much everyone in the community in our 5,000 strong community in, in Singapore. I think we're coming to 6,000. Oh, 6,000 fountain pen lovers community um, are chasing, you know, inks and then papers. Um, one of the questions I wanted to pose to, I guess, to Mervyn first and, and later um, to Clement as well is, 
what do you look for in paper and how important is price versus value? Price versus value. So uh, what I look for in a paper is that uh, I want to practice with paper which shows off the ink really well. So whenever you're practicing for a hobby, uh, I guess the flow state is really important. So the way the paper writes or handles is also um, a, a very, very big factor in how, how we get into the flow state when we're doing calligraphy or maybe uh, you write art, like journaling all these. So uh, TR paper is really smooth. Uh, I really like it. Uh, however, I think it's, it's a tad on a thin side. So whenever uh, we practice something at home, uh, not in the air-conditioned room, so you use a fan and you tend to have papers flapping around. So you have to really find something to, uh, to anchor, it. anchor it, down, it, down, it down. Yeah. And then it causes crinkles. And I think yes. that's the number one complaint about Tomoe River paper is that it has that tracing paper quality yes, and then yes, it'll... So, uh, but then uh, after when you look at it, after you look, after you finish practicing your practice, and you when you look at your your work, and you feel that there's a sense of achievement, or maybe uh, you you feel very happy because uh, it's so shiny, it, it sheens, and then the paper and the letter forms look correct, and then uh, yeah, you feel accomplished for maybe for that just that fifteen minutes after you finish writing. So which only good, fifteen minutes, which is good enough, right? Good enough. <laughs> good enough. Good enough. So. Uh, the quest for paper never ends. The quest yeah. for nice sparkly inks also don't end. So we all know that Tomoe River paper is a tad on the expensive side. Uh, not that we don't already spend enough money on paper, on, on pens, you know, and inks, but paper as well. Um, what do you, what do you think is the happy medium between how much you spend on paper? What, what are some brands that you think are good value? Uh, I think brands of good value, I think there's one called uh, the Kokuyo, yeah. yes, Kokuyo is a very good uh, value for money paper. So it, it is smooth. When you write on it, it doesn't feather that much. And then it's quite cheap as well. And most inks perform and quite well. And most inks perform quite well. Yeah. That's part of the Japanese um, campus brand, Kokuyo. Yeah. All their papers, they've got different grades, different weights. Um, one that uh, people in our group had, it had a little bit of a trend moment, was the Kokuyo Century Edition Notebook. Um, it is a set, sorry, it's a 100 GSM notebook paper. Um, it's the same if you buy the loose leaf Kokuyo Mio paper, but people kind of... Oh, no, it's not, it's not. Is one, it not the same? That one is called the... Oh, Shio Bo, so, sorry, Shio Bo, yes, that's right. And that's the highest grade. That's the highest grade. Um, but because of that, uh, they were having a one-for-one -one sale at one of the local stores uh, earlier, <laughs> sorry, last year. And even though it was during Circuit Breaker, you know, people in our community were flocking there. And I think the shop owners didn't really understand like, like, like why the they were running out of... <laughs> it's the GameStop phenomena that's yeah. happening with us. Because those are limited edition, that's the problem with some of these papers, they stop producing them or they produce them with a different factory, it's different, so we're all like, okay, we've got to hoard them. Um, so I, I agree with uh, Mervyn that Kokuyo is actually a good, good happy medium. <laughs> Another paper I think is a good happy medium is Berlitz. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yes. And why we're all looking at Clement yeah, is because Clement is the Hurlitz evangelist. Some are, yeah. In fact, some of are other more senior members than me. Uh, I when I share it with them, they call it the satanic paper because it performs so well and it's so cheap that it's a uh, how is it? It's like it's not even it doesn't even make sense. It's like a dollar forty for a pad of fifty sheets. Yeah, yeah. 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 so it's, that one is uh, made in Germany, right under the Pelican umbrella. Yeah, now under Pelican. Yeah. Yeah. So that one, uh, I think only Art Friend is the only store that carries that. There's no other store. Like that. Yeah. Um, and also I ship. One whole box over to Taiwan before. Yeah, and because they're all asking for it. And what they say is that one of the nice things is also um, yeah, they, they, they are the, the Chinese calligraphers now using from the pen. And they say it displays details very well. It's extremely good at displaying details. So I think that is a good paper use for practicing. Yeah, and also for just daily scribbling. Uh, I mean, uh, when you write like, minutes of meeting, you know, it's, uh, that is a, uh, it's a very well behaved. And it, and it won't it won't break yeah it won't break your it won't budget. break the bag it won't break it won't break the bag yeah so, so we tend to collect them in draw you know in, in packs of like twenty or thirty um it, it it's true it is an addiction it is a habit and it's a rabbit hole that that you can't easily climb out of um 
Uh, Roshi, uh, maybe I can take one step back in our history. Uh, I think, I'm not sure whether Moody knows this. It's the very early days where um, SFPL is dominated by most of the English calligraphers. Mm. Um, people like Hui Minhua were the admins. So, actually, during that time, the English calligraphy standard paper they used was Mellow Text. Mm. Uh, Mellow Text is a British produced paper. Right? Uh, the, the standard is called Brazilian White. 100 jazz. It's still available in Singapore today, although the price is going up, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, later, what happened, and the one, it also, it displays color extremely well. It doesn't feather. It's just that the one, in terms of display of sheen and all that, it's not so fantastic. And then, so later, when Tomoe River was introduced, so Tomoe River very rapidly displaced Hurley's as the paper of choice for the English calligrapher. And one of the main reasons is also because of the smoothness. Because the Hurley's paper is not that smooth. And when in the Western calligraphy, they use the especially pointed nib calligraphy. Uh, if you guys uh, play with pointed nibs, the deep nibs, uh, or the blue dew pens that uh, recently are uh, very much in fashion. Mm, the flex, right? yeah. yeah. You notice that the, the tip of the nib, it has no tipping material. It does not have like a, a bulb or a ball. Yeah, I um, okay. have one that you can, you right. can show. Um, I don't know if you can oh, see yes. it. Yeah, it does not have tipping material. You see the nib itself. Yeah. So because the reason for this is because for you to get very thin hair lines. Up. So when you use this on normal paper, definitely you will get a much more scratchy writing experience. Because that's, that's what the calligraphers are trained to learn how to use it. Up. But Tomoe River kind of cancels out the problem to quite, a, mm. quite some extent because of the smoothness of its surface. So that's why... The nib won't catch on It won't catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's actually one very important point. Yeah. Um, besides the pointed pen, another one is italic nib because the real, real italic nib, if you have an aurora italic nib, you find that the edges are very, very sharp. So if you are not manipulating the nib correctly, the sharp edge will catch on the fiber. So Tomoe River, it kind of like... It yeah, solves, helps make your yeah, writing it solves a lot of the problems for you by itself. Uh, yeah. So that's a bit of history. Yeah. And, and, and I, that's probably uh, why it is so popular. Um, I wanted to talk really quickly about uh, letter writing paper. Um, that's something that, uh, I mean, a lot of us who still work, you know, you know, who thrive in the analog world, will use, our, will use our fountain pens to write letters to pen pals all over the world. Um, G. Lalo has some very good paper that's out of uh, France and um, I think Claire Fontaine and Strathmore has pretty decent paper. Although recent batches of Strathmore, um, people were complaining about it feathering. Um, so I guess when different factories make different kinds of paper, uh, it could end up it could end up having you know very different results from what you might be used to. Um, Moleskin is something that is almost like a dirty word in the fountain pen world uh, because the paper, the paper uh, is, is not, it's not very desirable. But what I found, I mean, to be fair, we love the way these journals look. Um, it's, it depends on where the paper was made. There's no way to tell what batch that is, no way to tell which factory. So it's a little bit of a, of a gamble, a hit and miss. Um, but, you know, suddenly when you're trying out all the different papers, um, it, well, that's what makes this hobby exciting is that you can try, you know, th there's no end to trying all the different papers out there. Um, there was a paper that we tried tonight that was called um, Cloud, sorry, New Chiffon Cream. And that's used in the Robiki notebooks. We had one earlier. And the reason why I bring it up is because it has, it's the opposite of Tomoe River. It's actually, it's a bit toothy. And what that means is it has a little bit of catch to it. So, um, so this is this is what this is what they look like, uh, and it's it's nice slim size, which is which is why I like it because they fit you know in, in your in your wallet or you know in, even in your pocket very nicely. But the paper, if you've ever tried, and it is in that Yamamoto sample pack, it's um, it's a little bit rough almost, and you think that oh, then, you know, it wouldn't be nice writing with it at all. But it actually is. Certain inks will perform better on it than others, but that toothiness gives you a bit of 
grip yeah. and um, sometimes it makes your your you know makes the, the pictures or makes the words just sort of look better pop a little bit better um, sometimes the complaint with Chamoy River or some of the other really smooth papers like Kukuyo is it's too smooth um, too slippery so that's something else to 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 know and to think about as well do we want to stop and take questions I was just looking I didn't see anything if not, among the other papers, Jordan, anything that you want to share about which ones you, you love or hate? Yeah, so while we are going through this session, since it's live, you guys can ask any questions. Oh, yes, some, someone came in, some, uh, right. and if you are enjoying the session so far, uh, please um, put Let a us know. <laughs> yeah, put a like or love kind of things, uh, or you can start a watch party if you are watching this from Facebook so that you have more yeah. friends to kind of enjoy this as well. And let us know if you would like to see much more of this type of content or the kind of topics you want us to discuss. I mean, the Fountain Pen Lovers Group has been around for, for some years now, but we've never really done this. And it's, it's really COVID um, that has kind of pushed us to do something a little bit different. We look forward, of course, to having regular pen meets again. But till then, um, you know, and through the generosity of people like Wayne who are giving us a venue to stream from and all the, the technical things, which remember, analog people, um, we we hope to do more of these. So please Sorry, um, let us know. The question came from Jeremy Tian. Mm -hmm. He asked, how is the toothiness compared to Kokuyo Shikari? Toothiness um, ah. of what? So, I'm sorry, could you clarify? Your question? I think it means the chiffon, the the chiffon? chiffon cream. This one. I think they are quite comparable. Mm. Yeah, it's not it's not that far off from uh, Shikari. Tokyo Shikari. So I think I think yeah, it's not that it's not that toothy or not that uh, smooth, not as smooth as uh, Tia paper. But I think it still gives a fair amount of feedback uh, or tactile feedback to your hand, so that you know uh, what what letters you're writing rather than slipping all around on Tia paper. For for those who don't know, um, Kokuyo uh, loose leaf actually comes in two varieties uh, the one that's ultra ultra smooth and that's the sara sara um that is really smooth very slippery um it some people don't like it because the ink can look a little bit muted on that paper but it's really good you know value it's really good for school for meeting notes and so on the shikari paper that jeremy brought up it has a little bit of that toothiness. Yeah. So the, the feedback, the tactile feedback that Mervyn was mentioning when you write, um, some fountain pen users much, much prefer it. Um, I personally prefer the texture of the Sarasara, but I don't like the way some of the inks look muted. So I, I don't know what you guys think. Um, were there other questions? Uh, uh, yeah, so yes, do, do look up if, if you need if you need help with uh, the Hiragana on the packaging, you can let me know. So, oh, yeah, he wrote that. Oh, yeah, that's very helpful. <laughs> it's on Sara Sara, which is the ultra smooth one. It's and a then, super smooth, and yeah. Shikari is the one that has a some little bit of toothiness. Grip, some grip to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, can I just also ask as well? Because, like, we have 18 papers here. We talked a lot about a lot of different types of papers mm -hmm. today. So I don't know how, how this paper buffet wise, maybe you all just go through a little bit of the 18 papers. I don't know whether you have tried all 18 papers yet by now, yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more or less. I've, try, tried, I've, I've tried all the 18 papers on <coughs> English calligraphy. Yeah, so I think maybe because uh, we're asking people also to come down, so we can also focus on what the few of the paper is it interesting to do because we still have three more sessions tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, not all are full, especially the early morning because I think Singaporeans all like to wake up late. Yeah, you can still come <laughs> down at 11 a.m. and 12 noon. Um, so those sessions aren't full yet. Um, please do come down. Thing is, the this paper pack is now out of stock, right? I think yeah. the last one was bought. So this is your chance to try it before the new stock comes in. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it is quite exciting because you've got to bring your pens down, your favorite pen nib ink combination. Um, I did this trial earlier tonight. Uh, I tried to bring nibs, oh, sorry, I tried to bring uh, inks that were considered a little bit more problematic but have really nice colors. So I use a lot of Noodless inks. It's, it's an ink brand out of, out of the US. It's an independent small ink shop. Um, very wet inks, very well lubricated. Um, some really lovely colors, interesting quirky history behind some of the inks. 
and they're all hand hand mixed uh, um, in in single batches by the by the ink maker. Um, but there, it is problematic sometimes, and there's a lot of feathering, bleed through, ghosting. Um, bleed through is when you can see the. Yeah. Is there a bleed through? Yeah, you can see the other sides uh, yeah. ink uh, through the paper. Ghosting is you can't really it, the ink isn't necessarily hasn't really gone through the paper, but you can see it. It's visible. Um, two, two or three of the papers in this paper batch that I tried earlier, which I really love, if you don't mind writing only on one side, and you, for example, if you're sending letters or whatever to your friend, or if you're doing like a nice piece of calligraphy, um, you're not really going to use both sides of the paper. I would definitely recommend, I gave him a really high score, uh, recommend the champion copy and um, let me see, OK Fools, which is also in this pack. Um, though the paper is thin, uh, some of it almost tracing like quality, the ink looks really lovely on, on those papers. So that's something that I would encourage you to try um, for yourself. And Clement also, maybe Clement has got a set of the papers. You said when you are reading through the papers, there's some history as well. Mm -hmm. So I noticed that some papers might not even be available anymore. So this is right. something interesting about this paper collection. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, so I think some of those because all these papers are all from Japan. So I, I, of course, no matter what paper making, it has to be passed down through the generations. Yes. Yeah. Did you have something to talk about or some of these papers as well? <laughs> Actually, it was quite a while back. But um, what? Well, uh, See, we were the so, first to buy these paper things yeah. when they came <laughs> Actually, out. Obviously. I, the well, the one that um, I think it has kind of like. Shouldn't say stir up, but it has uh, led to some controversy in the circles these days. It's still Tomoe River. The reason is because they are they move their plant to somewhere else. I remember they something, changed something. They changed about some the things actually. about how they manufacture the paper. Uh, it was a major press release that came out, right? And so, um, so actually, you can read up a bit on that. They are talking about in twenty nineteen because right. As much as we analog lovers like paper, the overall industry or the world is moving to digital. Yeah. Right? So yeah, paper production is not what it used to be before. So even for Tamoy River paper that, that the whole world of fountain pen lovers love, their production has been affected. So they had to close one of their factories down yes. and then they had to actually subcontract their pro production. Yeah. So which is why some people might notice the difference if you've been but, a you know, user. We don't know. So that's the that's a little bit of the controversy, right? So we we there are many, many brands of notebooks um, and even like notepads that use Tomoy River paper. Um, we don't know where even though they say the changeover happened, you know, late like 2019 and early 2020, yeah. even our friends in the paper and notebook, you know, industry. Um, don't actually know when the paper sort of switched over exactly. So most of us still have batches, I'm pretty sure, the batches and batches of the old paper. Maybe some of the new ones have snuck in, we don't know. Oh no, there's um, a way to find out. Is there a way On to find out? package is something, some, uh, the model number, let's say something 52, 52 GSM, right? right. Something 52 something. Then the new one will be something 52 N. Right? Oh, there is an okay. N at the end of it. So okay. that is the new to River. Is, uh, actually, I haven't gotten my hands on the new batch to try yet, so I cannot judge, I cannot say. Mm. But certain people have said that in terms of things like ink resistance, yep. in terms of color display, yep. it's actually it's as good as the old one. But certain photos on Reddit have come out yep. that actually it feathers quite badly. Oh. So I don't know also. So this is, I, I am not able to give all of you an answer. Because I do not have first-hand experience with the new batch of the Tomoe River. So unfortunately, uh, I guess this is where my knowledge ends up. But so you know, that, that, that's the fountain pen community. Mm. I think that so many of us are so excited about all these different papers. So we try it with different inks, different pens, and then Actually, we, yeah. we spread the word. Yes. And then a lot of it is hearsay as well. Um, but everyone's experience sort of varies. Actually, yeah, maybe maybe we, we should do a shout out to whoever is watching. Mm. If you have the new if you are in possession of the new Tomei River yes. paper, yeah, why not post some information on 
Yeah. And share the information. And, and share your writing yeah. samples. Yes, yeah. yeah. it's, uh, it's going to be beneficial for everyone, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, market trends is also one of the things that we we are interested in. Yeah. We also want to know what's happening in the paper markets. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. More questions? Question come in. Uh, I think shout uh, Jenhui. So does the type of writing, calligraphy, regular writing, Chinese versus English, etc., influence the type and brand of paper use? Yeah, I think so. Anyone wants to? Uh, <laughs> uh, the second is not there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I do Chinese calligraphy as well. No thanks to Clement. <laughs> Yes, then, then he introduced me to the world of custom, uh, custom nib grind. Uh, it's burned a hole in my pocket. Uh, but what, what, I find, uh, what I find is that I, I prefer rougher paper on Chinese calligraphy. Uh, the reason why is because uh, my letter forms for Chinese are really bad. And then uh, if, it, if it's too smooth, I, I, couldn't, I, I can't feel uh, what I'm writing. So uh, I switched to the Hurlitz paper uh, with the grids. And then uh, I started off from there. So I find that uh, Koki also does great paper. Oh no, sorry, uh, Midori. Midori does great paper as mm. well. Midori, yeah. Oh, we never talked about Midori. Oh, yeah. Midori is also it's a fantastic paper, but it's yeah. like smoother than Herlitz. Uh, so uh, when I've gotten enough practice on the Herlitz, then I'll switch to the <coughs> Midori paper. So, but for English calligraphy, uh, smooth paper is always the best. Uh, for example, mm. I have from the paper buffet. Uh, I have selected two papers I want to show. So the first one is the the half tone color nine nine white. So this one you see on the during the start of the live stream, and as well as uh, the kin kaku den. So the kin kaku den, uh, I can feel that the one of the one of the sides of the paper is smooth. The other is a bit rough. Oh. Yeah. So I, I can feel it on in my hands, and when I wrote on it using uh, the Pilot FA, it's slightly fluty, so I could control my my movements well. So I believe that if let's say I, I were to use this paper on Chinese calligraphy, it will also turn out well. So these two papers are the two top papers I've chosen from the eighteen papers from the paper buffet. Mm -hmm. So. The King Kaku Den is one of the papers that's no longer in production. What? Oh. Yes. Yeah, because um, the the master who was doing this paper has passed on, mm. and so nobody to take over this business. Okay, so but whatever remaining stock yeah. of paper is what they had. How, how much remaining stock? Uh, have? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we need to go and get some feedback from you guys, and then we can go and ask from how much paper stock they have yeah. left. Oh. Yeah, so that we can grab hold of all the remaining it, pieces. It, it's funny that you brought up that. So yes, it, it, that's always the question. How much of that paper is left? <laughs> Here's the thing, right? Because generally we ask the question, what does your writing affect, you know, the kind of paper you choose? So earlier when I did this um, this this writing buffet sampler, um, I actually gave it a pretty low score. I'm not, not low like one, but it was like three, 3.5. And one of the comments I wrote was actually not so nice to write on. <laughs> Yeah. And the reason is because um, I think for, for Mervyn and for Clement, when they do calligraphy, it's very important to have the, a little bit of that catch um, and also for the lines to be very crisp. For me, um, one of the things I do is write and I write long memos, sometimes long, long plots, you know, when I'm doing um, stories or fiction. Um, and even if I'm doing like corporate memos, I like to, I like to draw all over the paper and use a very wet and uh, smooth rounded nib to to write and because of that i i want a paper that will move easily uh with the nib i've chosen um and it, i don't need it to be extra fine i don't need it to be extra crisp but i want it to be comfortable so that when you when you hold the pen and, you, and you, your your pen glides over the paper so i didn't find the toothiness of the king copy then that um that desirable for me um, I don't mind, I prefer it if a paper is actually thinner uh, so that I can, you know, rifle through the pages um, more, more easily. Um, so I, I don't mind that at all. I don't always write on double side because uh, when I want to lay out, you know, my drafts and, and, and go over them, I don't necessarily want to have to flip back and forth. So what's really important, something I wanted to show was your nib actually makes a big difference on the kind of paper um, that you would choose. 
And early on, I had said I, I tend to like uh, the thick fat nibs. Um, and maybe Wing wants to kind of close up on. So this is something I just got, and it's a it's a O oblique triple broad nib. Yeah, yeah. And this is something that most people would say, oh my gosh, it's so impossible to write with. I can do a little sample here because yeah. it is simply it's such a fat nib. How how would you um, how would you how would you control the pen? Um, the ink I have in here is Shinkai by Iro Shizuku. But one of the things I love about this nib, even though it's oblique, is that it really glides across the paper. And look, see, this is copy paper, right? And it still performs really, really well. Um, there is almost no pressure um, that I have to put on the paper or holding the pen. So I think that nib choice and then in conjunction with paper choice is something that, that makes a really big difference as well. And that's why I prefer rounded nibs on paper that doesn't have to be too thick or too too toothy um, because they perform the best. So hopefully that answers Jenkins' question. Um, and I and I would say additionally for drawing, for sketching, um, we have quite a few urban sketches in our group uh, and a lot of them like watercolor paper. Uh, we have a lot of journalers and, and um, I, I guess journalers, bullet journalers in, in our group, yeah. yeah. And they would want paper that's a little bit um, a little bit less absorbent so they can you know paint with watercolors over it um so so that really does affect the kind of paper that we use um you wouldn't really be able to use tomoe river paper for that kind of bullet journaling but midori which is a brand we haven't talked about um they have here as well but not in the not in the paper buffet i think is a brand worthy of looking at it's a good price versus value of uh, price and value um, meeting place. It's not too expensive and really smooth. Um, Mervyn was saying he uses it for calligraphy as well. It's really, really good for drawing, for journal spreads, and so on. Um, more okay, questions? sorry. Sh uh, uh, shout out to Garrick Ong, uh, who is asking, which brands of paper can tahan Singapore's high temperature and humidity <laughs> and not worsen over time? Please explain tahan first. Uh, uh, for the non-Singaporean viewers view watching this video, tahan simply means can withstand. Oh, very good. <laughs> so okay. So um, the question, I think, I think uh, uh, the Moy River is one of them. We have like I have uh, several packs that batches. <laughs> yeah, for years, uh, open pack, and the paper doesn't really show much sign of deterioration. Uh, the Kokuyo uh, Shikari is like that. So, yeah, I they've been with, with me for several years. Also, no sign of deterioration. Um, does it also depend on the storage on, on your yeah on your home and, and your you know your 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 environment and so on? Um, I've had issues with shikari um, in the very beginning, but then I was told by a kind friend in the group after you let the let the air out of the package, uh, lao hong as we call it, um, it actually performs better, and that's what I found to be true. But that's because I use uh, broad wet nibs. So someone who uses maybe finer nibs or drier inks may not have that issue. Um, something useful, I thought, uh, because I, I have think Midori, also. Midori also has that. Yeah. So when you collect so much paper, um, try and store it in a cool, dry place. Um, so your bedroom is good if you do sleep in air conditioning. Um, you know, if if as long as it's placed with good airflow. Uh, you know, when you when you buy, okay, Singaporeans snack a lot, right? When you buy those snack packets inside their desiccants. So don't throw the desiccants away, oh, yeah, lock yeah, them yeah, in the right, plastic right. box that you keep your papers in. That I have found to be quite helpful. Um, uh, the big, big desiccants from like when you eat Japanese seaweed, like those are really good uh, for helping paper. Um, and then I, I noticed that, uh, so, or if you like photography and they have desiccants, you know, you can do that. Or keep one of those, um, it's like hu humidity suckers. You can buy them from the supermarket. Dehumidifier. Oh, dehumidifier. <laughs> Thirsty the hippo, hippo there, yeah. there we go, yeah. I've also done that as well. But I also uh, am in air conditioning quite yeah, a Someone said use silica gel packs. Yeah, silica gel packs, all those help. So just try and keep your paper uh, in in those kinds of you know drier conditions. Yeah. Don't put it in the bathroom, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't put it in the kitchen. Uh, try and keep them in that plastic or in, in plastic boxes that will help. Somebody saying, <laughs> can you store in a camera cabinet, a dry cabinet? Oh, I don't think I don't think you need to go to that. I know people who do, but they are also photographers. So yeah. so 
so they have a different reason for, for doing yeah. that. <laughs> oh, oh, geez, my, my ex colleague. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Oh, yeah, we've got, yeah, okay. The person who is asking that question, she yeah. herself is a very good person. Yeah. Okay, I guess. So. <laughs> okay, um, then oh, the yeah, next. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah. The next question is by Suryo Budianto. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's asking, uh, does paper have an expiry date? Right. What is the average time before paper starts to Uh The answer is no. Paper does not have an expiry date. But will it allow Hong? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, if it allow Hong, is it better? Because you yeah, know sometimes it is. Yeah. Yeah. The, the traditional Chinese saying uh, is called uh, mm -hmm. means paper has an age of 1,000 years. Whereas like the silk-like material called Juan, it has a lifespan of 800 years. So actually paper can outlast cloth, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. So uh, the lifespan of paper, if stopped under proper condition, is very, very, very long. Uh, and we, and today we have copies of the Bible that is from the Middle Ages or yeah. earlier. Yeah. They have lasted for thousands of thousand years maybe. Yeah. So, um, no, paper does not really have that. And I, I would say, um, also, um, there are some other, back to the letter writing. Uh, faster, explain Lao Hong. Oh, Lao Hong. Oh, Lao Hong is basically, you know when you open a bag of potato chips and then you leave it open and you don't, you know, you don't, you don't eat it all of it right away. And then when you go back and eat the chips after like a day, it's soft and soggy and not crisp anymore. That's kind of the... That's kind of the meaning yeah, of the yeah. whole. <laughs> it's no longer fresh. I it's no longer fresh. It's stale. You know, the, the air has 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 fled, which is the direct translation of the Hokkien term, right? So, um, yeah. So it's 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 just not as crisp and, and fresh anymore. Um, but Crane and Company, as well as some other paper brands, use um, cotton blends in their paper. So I've had some of these papers for like 30, 30 plus years, and they still work really well. Um, so the, Strathmore. Strathmore is another yeah. one. So for those who don't know, like Crane makes um, the US currency. And as we know, some of them, you know, they, it's not like Singapore currency where it's plastic and, and, and actually can go through your washing machine. The Crane, the US currency has this cotton blend or whatever. So yeah. it, it, it is quite, um, it's quite hard. Uh, and so depending on the kind of uh, usage you want for your paper, if you want it for archival purposes, you know, you've got to pick the right, right paper for that. But there's a lot of paper out there in the market for that. So, so you know, right. maybe spoiled for choice. Okay, one of the, the big bosses, all <laughs> <laughs> uh, the technical experts has come, has come in. Uh, you say something like uh, acid deterioration can kick in up. Just after a few years on paper that isn't pH okay, mm. uh, true enough. Um, what I'm saying, what I can share with everyone uh, is also, I'm not sure about this pH control on paper, how is the chemical process now? Although I have a chemical engineering degree, but unfortunately that is not my area of study. I can't, I, I'm not so familiar with the pot and paper industry. But one of the things that you can try on your own is that if you are in possession of the KWZ Iron Ball Ink series, right, you can write that on the paper and see how fast the ink darkens. So if the paper contains certain chemicals, uh, the iron ball will oxidize very quickly. Is that the only brand of iron ball? Oh, no, other iron ball inks will, will other iron ball inks act the same way. It's just that KWZ because it has a wide range of colors, uh, so it is quite more, it's more obvious than we. Right. So if let's say you have those uh, watercolor acid-free paper, mm -hmm. which is which can be quite expensive, yeah. the, the, art paper, mm, right? the iron ball ink onto it, right? You notice yeah. that it will oxidize very very slowly. It's, it oxidizes at a speed that when your eye you, you cannot tell that it's becoming darker. But let's say if you use modern paper that has like things like whitening agents put into it, right? You just one stroke over it within a few seconds, or you can actually start start seeing the, see the, the, the getting darker already. So that is also one of the ways to differentiate whether the paper has certain things like uh, acid, whitening agents, or things like that going into the paper. Yeah. Actually, I, I picked this up. Uh, it was the boss of one of the fountain pen shops in Taipei who demonstrated this effect to me when I was there. That's really cool. Yeah, so, mm. <laughs> Can I have the name once Olivia mentioned about? 
So yeah, it's Crane, 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 Crane. Crane and Company, C R A N E. Um, I think you can still go to their website. They were having a little bit of controversy about having to close their factory. You see, this is, this happens everywhere, right? Um, uh, they're an American brand. Um, the other brand that I had recommended was G Lalo. That's G like Germany, and then L A L O. That's out of France. Um, I believe the same people who distribute G uh, G Urban inks also distribute them. Um, and then here's a, here's a fun fact for you. People in the fountain pen community know about Penida pens, but I came to Penida actually from Penida paper. They used to stop. Uh, they they used to create. Well, they used to make the paper and the stationery for royalty in Europe, and I think their store is in Florence, so where Visconti is. Um, so I went there and I bought you know a, a whole ton of, of that paper because it's really lovely, lovely paper. Um, so if you do get a chance to you know try and order some online, a lot of the European shops do ship to Singapore, so you'll be able to to find that if you like some fancy paper for your for your pen pals. I think maybe come back to just now what we were talking about, like uh, choice of paper for English or Chinese mm -hmm. calligraphy. Uh, first thing I, I should say is that I agree with what I'm saying. Uh, Chinese calligraphers, uh, pen calligraphers are actually also the traditional brush calligrapher is all the same. Uh. We prefer paper that has some grip to it. Because if it's too smooth, uh, you have no control. It, it, it flies all over the place. right? Um, so that is the, one of the first characteristics that we talk about. Uh, another few I would like to talk about two more characteristics. One is that we prefer paper that is thinner and softer, and not so much paper that is thick and hard. The reason is because if you have paper that is thinner and softer, right, because the nib is not like a brush, the nib is hard. So when the nib goes into the paper, the paper actually cushions the nib. And so it is more responsive to the differences in force and uh, direction and speed that you are moving in. So people that is thinner and uh, softer will respond better to the it can display a wider variety of details. Uh. So um, yeah, for example, to people uh, answer just now, I think it was someone. I mean, that's, that's why people right. use soft nibs, right? From platinum. No, but why if you don't have a soft nib? If you have a hard yeah. nib, then they are, I think it was Shamik, is it? Then, yeah, uh, yeah, he's not good about Midori cotton, Midori MD cotton. So yeah, look, oh, yeah, yeah, they've got there's, cotton as there's well. a Midori yeah. MD and there's a Midori MD cotton. Yes, yes. And the Midori MD cotton is a much softer writing yes. experience. Yes. Right? And then if you get your hands on the Strathmore 25% cotton, it also yes. behaves like that. Yeah, so, thank you for bringing that up, Shami. We we um, yeah. we forgot about that. Yes, that yes those are very, very nice. Yeah. Then, the second one point that I also like to say is also the display of the shading of it. The ink, uh, actually I not I don't really care about sheen. Like, you already, sometimes I use sheening, sometimes I don't know, but to me sheening is not so important. More important is the shading behavior of the ink. Because uh, in Chinese calligraphy, there is a lot of things like uh, light and heavy, fast and slow, right? And um, if you use an uh, ink that is very flat, all these details cannot be seen. But if you have a very shading in the shading actually helps you to display yeah, yeah. The, your technique, like the light to heavy, fast to slow, all that. Yeah. It actually can be seen through the shading of the ink. And what so, are the papers that would be best to showcase this? Uh, I think it will be, I think the Midori MD cotton is, is very good. Mm -hmm. um, currently, one brand that I found recently is this thing called the Kabayashi. Uh, it's uh, the, yeah. a Japanese company that they make the Tachia inks. They are the parent yeah. company oh. that makes the Tachia inks. Um, yeah, they make some very good paper also, uh, and it's not too expensive. So if you want, you can look for them on Rakuten. And if you have questions about the any of the brands that we've mentioned, um, and you'd like to know more about them or the spelling, um, just put a comment in there, and and I'm sure one of us will get to them um, when we can. Or if you're not already part of the Singapore Fountain Pen Lovers community, please go to our Facebook group yes. and Facebook. subscribe visit Facebook and visit our you know and post. We we'd love to see. Your writing, we love to see your, your paper tests, your ink samples, and everything. So please do that. And another uh, one, uh, yeah, so, uh, I think Christy asked me what is the red paper that Chi uh, Clement uses for couplets. Uh. <laughs> so that one is actually uh, is the traditional Chinese paper, it's handmade and hand dyed in red. So that one. Is uh, it rice paper? No, it's, it's not made of rice. It's again, it's made of uh, a mixture rice. of tree bark and hay. Yeah, so um, yeah. He, there are certain suppliers I can, I can get them from. Uh, if uh, if you want, you can you can ask me. I think the question is: Is it fountain pen friendly? 
Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. The reason why, okay, the reason why all these type of papers are Holman friend friendly is because of the rate, the rate thing that is, uh, that goes on to it, that everything makes it very, uh, so means very cooked. Uh. So it's like so called the cooked paper that I was referring to just now. Oh. When Father Bang in goes on it, it does not spread. It's actually very, uh, it sticks onto the same spot. So if you have something like a Nagina Tanik or something like that, and a, a nice black ink, or yeah, she inks will work well on me as well. Uh, but no, it's red, right? No, no, so you can't, can't, can't really see the shit. Yeah. Yeah. One of the papers we tried earlier is actually um, the black uh, yeah. colored oh, wood the free paper, paper yes. It's black, yeah. so only certain inks will show up uh, on there. I don't know if Mervyn tried any. Uh, I can't I see any now, <laughs> but some of the inks will will show up earlier. I think some of the people tried it. Um, this one is, yeah. yeah, you can see here when I move the angle. The light little angle, yeah. So right. someone earlier was asking, <laughs> Why do they even make such papers? Who's going to write on this? Sit non Secret love letter. <laughs> um, so Noodlers makes a UV, UV ink. Oh, that's called Blue Ghost. Uh, Blue, Blue Ghost. Ghost. Yeah. yeah. So that is one of the inks that probably will show. Also, there are some inks that have that UV component, uh, even if they work on regular, you know, white cream paper. Um, but if they have that UV component, you have the black light, you can see it. Um, I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but if you do a quick internet um, search, you and should then also fine. the Atramentis has a document oh, yes. white, yes. white document ink. Yeah. yeah, so the white document ink will be able to write on this kind of black paper. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's useful. That's useful. Mm, yeah. <laughs> There's kind of some people buy invisible ink, so called. And then you have to like put under certain heat treatment. Yeah. Like, yeah. Some yeah. fun stuff, right? Yeah, some fun inks there. Quite fun to do. It's fun to do with kids, especially. Mm. Um, not that you really want your children near your Tomoe, your precious Tomoe River stash, but you know, Actually, it's I, always fun. I it's think fun in the do. earlier days, right, when Tomoe River was not so common in Singapore, mm -hmm. the earlier, the very early uh, SFPR people, especially the English calligraphers, mm -hmm. people like uh, Hunter, they are, um, when they bought the Tomoe River, right, they bought like 4,000 sheets at one day. So so no so the the, I know. the aim of that is to dilute the shipping from Japan. Yes. Because it's yes. paper the paper itself is actually not expensive. Yeah. It's, it's a shipping. The shipping that's very expensive. Yeah. So they like maybe they got like ten people, they buy four hundred sheets, yeah. then they distribute. So so the, the cost of the shipping is being diluted yes. now. But now uh, I mean thanks to like you know City Labs and you all have the uh, they are bringing in yeah. straight these, pen also these they papers bring in at very large yeah. quantities already. Yeah. So Actually, the price that you can get in Singapore is quite competitive. Quite, quite good, yeah. Yeah. And, and you don't need to go through the hassle of trying to order through Rakuten, and then you get 4,000 sheets, and then you still have to find some way to distribute to all the friends. That's actually my, that was my introduction to Tomoe River paper. Oh, I yes? 100 A4 sheets, which I still have. And A4 is a very unwieldy size for me, personally. Um, I would need to, you know, cut it in half. I much prefer A5 or B5. And um, some guy, I met him at the MRT station and I bought 100 sheets. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, in I the, think his father shipped in like, I don't know, like a ton or something. In the know? old days, that's, that's what people do. Uh, yeah. See what we do for our paper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, also, during the circuit breaker, um, because I have some, some contact with one of the Japanese vendors, uh, so uh, they have, if you order above 200 SGD at one shop, they give you free shipping. So, I did a, the, yeah, I did a massive <laughs> group, group buy, uh, and so many people bought, and yeah, very quickly as it came, I quickly just, just distributed it to, it, it, actually distributing it was quite, quite tough, uh, because quite a few people requested my mail, uh, so I had to run to the post office, and then you know that time it was like the full, almost like the full lockdown, so it was quite, quite a hassle. Obviously the love we have for yeah. our hobby, uh, and, and for, for our, our friends in the community. Is, is quite great as, as you can tell. So, <laughs> any other questions that yeah, we have? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. The niece say, uh, what kind of Clement mentioned about the dyeing paper for writing cutlet? Sounds very similar to the sizing process for water color paper. Yes. Um, okay, actually, for that red paper, was, I, I am a bit surprised that there's so much interest on this. But that one, in addition to the red, red dye on the paper, there's actually one more step that they have. Uh, they actually press a very thin layer of wax. It's called la right? It means that it's, uh, there's a layer of wax that is on, on the final layer. But how does that affect the fountain pen friendliness of the paper? No, so it's, it's a kind of like a resistance, like the wax is kind of like a, a layer of resistance or something. So that, you know, uh, 
the ink doesn't run all over the place. Yeah, it's very, but it's surprising uh, is that if you have a relatively thick nib, right, you write, uh, you will see that the ink completely doesn't feather, but you flip it over, the ink actually bleeds through. The ink bleeds through on the reverse side, but on the main side, it completely doesn't feather. Because when you write with a fountain pen on washi tape, for example, you know, that has some adhesive, yeah. like you can't, I mean, the, the ink will not be absorbed by the paper. So yes. therefore, it just kind of, uh, uh, what do you call that, it, it, it bubbles into your head, you know, it just won't by its own, so yes. you can't see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then just now, uh, what Mervyn was bringing up about this, the King Kaku Den, is uh, actually relatively more, the more traditional Japanese uh, workmanship of the King paper. The more traditional Japanese style. Right? So maybe this one is not really big, but there is this Japanese store called Kyukyodo. It's in uh, it has outlets in Tokyo, it has outlet in uh, Kyoto, and I can't remember where else. Where they sell a lot of this traditional Japanese paper. But the problem is it is very expensive. But the paper is very nice, huh? the paper is really very, very good. It works well both for pen and brush. It's on the on the cover page itself, it does right. Pen, uh, fude, dual use it means that it works well equally well for both. Uh. So it's made by the, the tra traditional Japanese uh, uh, craftsmanship. It's just that that one is very expensive. Uh. But if you are like me, right? Um, yeah, you go inside. It, it's most likely you end up spending a lot before the couple. Uh, no, no That's, escape from that. This is uh, this is a common refrain you hear in our community. Um, we do have quite a lot of students in our group, and I'm just wondering if you guys remember some really, I mean, we mentioned Hurlitz just now. Yeah. Are there other brands that students can go through by the boat road and not hurt their pockets um, that you can think of that we haven't mentioned? I think the yet? Hurlitz is the best. Hurlitz is the best. Okay. A lot of working professionals in our uh, group have also mentioned that uh, uh, they buy Hurlitz uh, the means not the paper, but the diary. The yeah, Hermes diary. Yeah. There are these uh, uh, notebooks that are, I think, staple bound and, and ring bound. Also. Uh, ring bound. Yeah. Yes, and many people use them for like uh, day to day work, uh, personal planning. And, uh, what about copy paper? So I like double A. I, I think they're quite. Is that what Wing uses? Okay. So see that that double A paper is actually very good. We already have like two users that yeah, can attest to how how. <laughs> It is. Uh, the one that my company uses is Canon. It's actually not too bad. Yeah, decent, decent. Not, not, not fantastic, but decent. Yeah, we're not just fountain pen paper, uh, fountain pen friendly paper snobs here. We we do use um, you know regular paper too. Yeah, the <laughs> actually there's one very good uh, photocopier paper that mm -hmm. you can use for fountain pen. It's Kokuyo KB39. The model number is called Kokuyo KB39. Uh, available in A5, A4, and A3 sizes. One ring 500 sheets is only about thirteen dollars plus. <laughs> but the problem is, it's not available in Singapore, so ah. you need to find some way to ship it in from Japan. That's not. Uh, <laughs> so if you want, to, if you want to know how, uh, private message me. Yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how much time do we have left, Wing? Oh, it's okay. Okay. Oh, well, okay. The the big boss immediately said that it's for you, Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. To to the person who said that. I have one room of A5 and one room of, you know, one room of A4, one room of A3 stay in my home right now. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you so much to Wing thank and to our friends at City Lux for, you know, hosting this, this live stream for us. We weren't really sure what to expect, but we're so happy to do this. And we're so happy to at least sort of interact with you all again. Um, here's to hoping pen meets uh, come back soon. Yeah. Um, but if you would like to sample these papers, so here, here again is your last chance to do this before, you know, you have to wait for the new, New shipment and you know us pen people we can't wait for new paper okay so tomorrow 11 a.m 12 noon um we still have slots available i think 1 p.m uh maybe one or two slots yeah. left yeah. yeah so get on the website do it right away um now the moment you've been waiting for is the Vinta Inks giveaway little note about Vinta Inks it's out of the philippines and something special about it is all the names of the Vinta Inns evoke um, moments from Filipino history. Uh, and it is, uh, it's, it's also a social enterprise. So every bottle you buy, um, some of the proceeds go to, to some of their causes. So that's something, that's something um, special to note. And the, the colors, of course, are lovely. So here's your chance to win the 20 colors, the full, I guess the full, the full spectrum. Range. Yeah, full range of Vinta Inks. 
um, and this is what they look like normally. Um, these are two two yeah. mil sizes, right? Yeah. So, oh yeah, and they're obviously packaged very well because you know they're shipped from the Philippines. Um, so, how are we gonna do this oh, giveaway? Ah. Yeah. So all of you who are watch all the way, all the way to the end, to the end thank, you. thank you so much for being with us all the way here. Thank you so, so much. So all those who are interested, just type me now. Oh. <laughs> Very <laughs> easy. <laughs> just need to type me inside the comments kind of thing and then we'll choose one lucky person who's going to be around here. Yeah, and then we'll announce it straight away and then yeah, awesome. find a way to talk to us. Yeah, no, I can see no. the me's coming in, coming in, yeah. And by the way, um, uh, as a very special treat for uh, our SFPL community, um, there's also a 10% discount on City Lots products. So it's not just uh, not just for the paper buffet or the inks, but you know, if you haven't gotten your Leuchtturm journals yet or washi tapes, uh, that's another another rabbit hole to fall into, <laughs> or stickers or whatever. Yeah, stickers, stickers. stickers. <laughs> Um, you can ink use stamps. Ink, yeah, ink stamps, um, paper, more paper, Midori, um, and lots and lots of inks, and actually a lot of pens as well. Um, Twisby has some new offerings. Um, I, I just gave it a plug because I like Twisby, but many, you know, Monteverdi and a few of the other brands as well. Um, check out the website and then uh, use your SFPL um, discount code, which will be in this live stream's um, description. Yeah, it's right there now. To New Zealand. New Zealand. It's right there Ooh. now. So when do you deliver to New Zealand? We ship worldwide, actually. Oh. So, oh. Yeah, we ship worldwide. So for local Singaporeans, good for you. Anything above $20, that's free shipping already. Yeah. So that's pretty easy as well. And for those who want to test your pens, test the inks, you guys are happy. You guys are free to come down for our showroom. That's what this place is for. Yep. Relax down here. You can sit down here and slowly test. And because it's a showroom, not a retail store, nobody's going to disturb you. There's no tourists walking by. Then, you know, just take your time. I think we have customers who sit down here for two hours. Yep. Yeah. But enjoy yourself while you're here. Yeah. So I can see a lot of people saying me and writing comments already. So um, you guys can choose someone from the list. How, how are we going to choose? Yeah. How, how do we, we, do we you just can pick a just number? Pick a, just snap something, yeah. Okay, so, okay, um, I tell you what, okay, I will use you the can just say a number and we can come from the top down. Random number generator, okay? Oh, yeah, this is the see, this is what happens when you're doing when you do this with engineers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, very fair, it's not rigged. Yeah, wait, can you check, check how many people have responded? Wow, starting from quite a lot, huh? <laughs> so how many At least 10. So, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 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 Okay, eighteen. Eighteen. Okay, so eighteen, ah, let's generate, ah. Okay, so the generated number is thirteen. So. No, oh, thirteen. We show, show on the screen. It's show thirteen. Show on the screen. It's thirteen. It's 13, not Greek, ah. So it's thirteen. Not 13. <laughs> so I'll count from the top. Oh, um, yes. First person who responded was. Louise. Okay. She's yeah. the first person. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen is Cindy Im. Cindy Im. Oh, Cindy Im. Congrats. Congratulations. Congratulations. If you want to make more friends, you can always share this with some of your friends. There's 20 inks in there. Um, otherwise, check out Vinda Inks website so you can see the whole range of all the inks that you not have one um and and they're available the entire range is available here at city lux yeah. so um cindy um someone will contact you uh and, yeah. and let you know uh how how to get your how to get your price um what else did we have uh, is that it yeah I think yeah? So. yeah right yep so thank you very very great. much for joining us especially on a friday night although can't go out so you know, where are you <laughs> gonna go anyway yeah. um please let us know in the comments what you um, if, if you liked it, what you liked, what you didn't like, if you have any suggestions, comments. Um, and also, please continue to give us your, show, post your writing samples, um, show us your pens, show us your inks, show us your paper. That's what we all live for. That's, that's, what, that's what we live for. Okay, so, uh, sorry, I want, uh, one quick administrative issue, right? Um, just uh, because recently we have actually quite a few members, they invite their friends into SFPL. Okay, we are especially very glad to see that. 
But the problem is sometimes when the friends get invited, they do not answer the questions that we set at the Facebook entry. <laughs> so unfortunately, we see that, uh, and after 24 hours, they still don't answer the question, we have to decline uh, because our policy is that you need to answer the questions so that uh, and, and answer correctly. Uh, then, then even if you, let's say one of the questions is, do you have own a travel check? It's, it's perfectly okay to say that. No. We, yeah. do, we are not forcing you to say that. If not like some of the groups, uh, they are more demanding. Uh. <laughs> uh, and the special is name three brands of Hong Kong brands. If you have a name, you can't even enter the brand. So well, we are not like that. We are yeah, more we, quite we, friendly. We just, we just want to make sure, we just want to keep the group um, you know, useful and practical and friendly yeah. for everyone. So that's why we have you know, those criteria. They're very easy questions to, to answer. Um, just, just put something in there, put a comment in there. Um, so just tell your friends whom you do invite that they need to answer those questions. We are just trying to weed out bots. Uh, we, unfortunately, we see quite a large surge of bots recently. So we are just trying to weed out the bots. And that, that annoys everybody in the yes. community. So we're just trying to keep it, um, keep it, you know, user friendly. So any, any last hey, words? I man? think Wing, you should close out this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so thank you everyone for joining us today. So um, I'm, glad, I'm so glad that you guys joined us today and enjoyed yourself. So do stay tuned. And those who are interested in trying out the paper buffet, the new session tomorrow, do even if it's full kind of thing, if you think I still want to come down and take a look, you can come down and take discount. a look. Discount! <laughs> yeah, awesome. and all members, you can make good use of your discount. It's uh, valid for the next 48 hours. So do use the discount, all right? Thank you, everyone, Thank for you. watching, all right? Good night. Bye. Bye.